everybody, welcome back to another build order video. Today we are looking at Forge and his quick, speedy quick Forge hog. So off the rip, we're going to start off with a jackrabbit and a supply pad. You can actually do supply pad first, I recommend it, because you know, even that little tiny millisecond counts. Setting your rally point for your rabbit at a near supply crate and getting rolling economy one. Then you're going to want to go for a generator as your second building. This build is definitely different than the average Joe. You're going to upgrade as many pads as possible, supply pad first. And the timing on that's really crucial. You want to have as much supply as possible, so you want to hit that upgrade ASAP. Hope you enjoy this crispy, delicious HD 1080p 60 gameplay right now. Got new recording software. It's awesome. Go supply pad third and upgrade this generator the second it comes up. It's really important to send a marine off the bat to go grab power crates, just as I did. Then you're going to want to grab this mini base or a mini base as soon as possible. As soon as I hit 200 supply, you'll see I do that. Then I'm going to grab more supply crates with my marines. Uh, thing I also do with my rabbit is run across the map and try to grab uh, the power crates ASAP. You notice here there's an awkward moment where you need to upgrade a supply pad and then build another one. Um, and it's just like the tiniest little gap in the build, which is okay on different maps, like say Frontier, it actually has no gap. Um, as we take a look here, as soon as this mini base comes up, we're going to throw down another supply pad that's going to get us a top-notch eco. And then I'm also going to throw down an armory fifth on my main, and then we're going to buy this mini base back behind our side, which is actually really good timing. 130 uh, is not bad. It still does mean you have potential to get mini stolen. That's why I like to have a marine grab in that supply crate in front of my base. As we're going to see, the eco is going to line up nearly perfectly to buy ourselves a forge hog here. There we go. And the eco is delicious. We have three supply pads. No, two fully upgraded supply pads and one fully upgraded generator. Uh, and plenty of money to spend. So now we're just going to produce marines and a barracks on an extra mini here. Get rolling eco 2 or heavy metal or pelican drop. It's up to you. I prefer rolling eco 2 just because it gives me that uh, reduced research time for pad upgrades um, and reduced cost, which definitely helps out. As you're going to see here, I did opt out of upgrading that other supply pad, and that's simply because I want my upgrade for Forge on time. The way this build is set up, it uh, essentially means your Forge Hog comes out, and Anvil Round is starting research fairly shortly after. See, we have 315 power when he comes out, and then about a second later, we have just enough. Next, you're just doing a Power Node snag game here. Just want to grab as many Power Nodes as possible, keep your Power Eco a rolling. That's a forge pun, I'm sorry. I need to get better jokes. Once again, just continuously pumping, triple pumping marines here. Having this extra eco is actually going to put us in such a position that there is no other infantry army this early on in the game that can actually outmass our numbers. As soon as you do have the anvil round done, I recommend either throwing down a supply pad in place of your army, sacking it, or waiting up and going for a generator. Against banish, I usually go double gen. Uh, but against UNSC, I typically go for either another barracks uh, to get more Hellbringers out or go for uh, another Harvester just to get more Marines out. You notice that I did go second generator. It's going to be rolling in the eco still, which is my favorite thing in the world. More Hellbringers. All you need is one Marine and Forge to go and take these nodes, but uh, you know, better to be safe than sorry. At around the 335 second mark is when you want to begin your aggression. Uh, make sure you set your rally point either on your forge hog or on your enemy's side of the map. You really just want to be poking and prodding and just being super obnoxious. Of course, I'm going to check there for the power node. Notice he doesn't have that. But be wary and know that uh, if your enemy is playing defensive like this AI is right now, this absolute god AI, then you need to spam your anvil round and just keep your marines at a safe distance, especially against these ghosts here. This is exactly what a normal Arbiter player would do, except there would be conduit stasis mines flying at you this time. Notice I go for grenade ASAP. Against scouts, I always get grenade as quickly as possible. Um, if not, then what I'll do is, like, uh, if I don't see scouts from enemy player, I'll just upgrade my generator and just start swimming in money. You know, notice here I catch a couple of these ghosts off because the AI let them slide and I just got some pretty nice little concaves on that just continually pumping the marines the entire game notice I'm already at 57 army population at 440 that's not bad nades are upgraded as well against engineers you really want to target fire those NGs 
in a lot of different situations, you can go for the, uh, the how do you call it, the carpet bomb, even though I know it's not. <laughs> Just from Halo Wars 1, you can either go carpet bomb, uh, or you can also opt out for, uh, or opt into res drones, which is what I like to do. Of course, in this engagement here, having nades against these ghosts is perfectly timed. Um, and now I can just save it for res drones and tech 2 because I'm looking so good. So I passed the 1,000 power margin. How long will it take me? Not very long. I hit about 60 power over. And now I'm already going into tech 2 in this aggressive situation against most banished players. They can't do much at this point. Uh, you just kind of walk over them if you have enough Hellbringers as well to support. Um, but in general, as long as you kept up on your infantry pump, you're looking really damn good. You really don't want to have more than six Hellbringers. Uh, they're just, actually, they start adding up to be a big power investment. However, three, four, five, not a bad amount, uh, just because they will help take out buildings and some infantry. Notice my army split here is not too shabby. Uh, against turrets, you really don't want to use your ammo round, but since there's nothing here to defend, I'm just going to use that as well as res drones. Um, then I'm also going to go opt in for air pad and then armory on my main base, and this is so that I can upgrade my forge ASAP, and I can do the stereotypical uh, combat tech marine nightingale push here with my hero. It's basically the strongest push in the game right now, in my opinion. You'll notice I'm going to just keep producing marines, not on my main, so that way I can get my combat tech going. Uh, as soon as these marines do get to combat tech before the 7 minute mark, they are damn impossible to stop. Hellbringer still laying down the fire! And in a lot of situations as well, uh, I've been able to get into, uh, what's it called? Why, why, I'm, I almost want to call it Oxide Tank. Why can't I think of it? Somebody help me in the comment section below. What is Oxide Tank called in Halo Wars 2? Why, why do I not know off the top of my head right now? Dispersion nozzles. Thank you. Thank you guys for sending me energy. Here we are. Base is almost gone. It is 2 in the morning. Why am I doing a video right now? I don't know. But this build is damn awesome. Combat Tech Marines. Then you go for the Kodiak drop on your fourth point. And there is not much that your opponent can do. In a lot of situations when you're pushing a base like this, and they're able to defend it for the most part at the five to six minute mark, even though you have Combat Tech, usually what I have to do is step back up, uh, get Combat Tech if they're, they like, say they have a lot of turrets. Call in the Kodiak drop in a very easily defendably aggressive position, if that makes sense. Far enough back where they can't get attacked without going through your army, but close enough that they can shred a base. Call that in. That's why I saved up all my supply right here. Put them in a good spot, and then just start shelling the absolute hell out of everybody. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if there is a leader that you would like to see a build for, please let it in the comment section below. If someone else already said your leader in the comments, make sure that you just hit them with a happy little thumbs up so that way we can see the top comments uh, and the top votes from you guys. We also did see recently that you guys wanted to see more teams gameplay, so be expecting that. Nick and I are going to be streaming and playing some team gameplays. Uh, so that way you guys can see what we do in 2v2s for combos and things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Slick from Breaking the Clutch. And we'll see you guys next time. I'm proud of you. You fought well today. If you enjoy Breaking the Clutch content and want to get more involved, join our Discord server to find teammates, community, and the ability to chat with us directly. Furthermore, follow us on Twitch to join the experience live, where we play our favorite Halo games and hang out with our audience multiple times a week. You'll find the links to both of these in the description of the video down below. Thank you for participating in our community, and enjoy the video.